This anime review was requested by OAW patron Jonathan R. Salute to you, sir. And if you have a request for an anime that you would like to see a first impression style video or a full blown series review right here on OAW Entertainment, become a patron at patreon.com slash OAW for first impressions, both anime and manga. You can select the Crunchyroll tier and for full series, you can go ahead and select the Blockbuster tier. So once again, that is patreon.com slash OAW. And with that being said, this is going to be my first impressions of the 2007 anime series, Mononoke. Let's get it started. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Greetings to everyone watching live and everyone watching after the fact. Shout out to the faithful and salute to the patrons. This is Larry Williams, OAW Command in Chief, here to bring you all another first impressions anime style review. Uh, how's everyone doing? Hope everyone's enjoying their afternoon slash evening, whatnot. And I know it's been a while since I've done one of these. I'm late. I'm late. I'm sorry, guys. My bad. My bad. I'm late. I'm late. But once again, Want to give another huge shout out to OAW patron Jonathan R. Thanks so much, man. He requested this one. I'm not going to tell you how long ago this was requested. But anywho, he requested for me to go ahead and take a look at the 2007 anime Mononoke, which is a series I was only vaguely familiar with. I had heard about it before. I had seen, you know, like clips of it before, but never really got a chance to get into. So I'm going to go ahead and give you all my initial thoughts on the series. I watched the first two episodes, which actually is a two part pilot. It's the first episode. It's a two parter. But I'm going to give you all a review of that episode and then just pretty much my overall thoughts on, you know, everything I've read about the series, everything I've seen about it so far, and just pretty much how the whole thing breaks down. All right. So once again, as always, guys, feel free to read along with me in the description box below. Oh, and real quick. If time permits, I will be doing uh, questions at the end of this broadcast. But if you want to make sure that your question or comment gets addressed before the end of tonight's show, you can always drop a super chat. And as always, those are greatly appreciated. So let's get this thing going. This is my initial thoughts and first impressions of the 2007 Japanese anime series Mononoke, produced by Toei Animation and directed by Kenji Nakamura. And a synopsis goes... Mononoke follows a wandering, nameless character known only as the Medicine Seller. The series is made up of individual chapters in which the Medicine Seller encounters, combats, and subsequently destroys Mononoke. The Mononoke are a type of awakashi, unnatural spirits that linger in the human world by binding themselves to negative human emotions. The medicine seller always proceeds in the same manner, using his knowledge of the supernatural to fend off the Mononoke until he can learn the spirit's shape, known as the, kata the Katachi, its truth, known as the Makoto, and reasoning, known as the ko Kotowari. Only then can he unsheathe his sword and exercise the demon. All right, so... Real quick, let me go into a little bit more detail about what that all entails. So um, because there is a change in translation. So for the sake of this review, I'm just letting you guys know I watched the um, Japanese dub, Japanese dub with English subtitles. That's the one I watch. And this is the language that they use in that. But in the English dub, it is referred to the let me see if I can find it real quick the way they break it down in the English dub is that so the shape the katachi in the English is referred to as the form um the reasoning which is the kotowari is actually referred to as the regret so essentially the idea is supposed to be that once the medicine seller encounters the supernatural beings, the form, so the shape of them, once he's able to identify them. Um, yeah, it's form, truth, and reason slash regret. So the form, the intention, and then the the reason or the regret, the motive, if if that makes sense. That's sort of like the three elements at play. But yeah, but that's the way it's translated over in the English. Okay, so 
pretty much the synopsis, the way I broke it down, that's sort of like the overarching um, template for the entire series because every episode is its own case, which features a different type of Mononoke. It's specific to that that setting and that uh, and those characters within that given episode. And so, of course, you know, that's sort of how the show goes. So I will be giving you all my review and my thoughts on uh, episode one and two, which is the Zashi Zashiki Warashi uh, story arc. Um, so general thoughts on it, dude, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And I, and I, I hope Jonathan, I hope you watching, man. I hope you are watching. Uh, because so this re this request came a few months after I did my Demon Slayer review, which is pretty much like my favorite, the fate, my favorite anime I've seen this year. Um, actually, I, I, I can't even believe it's it's in this same year because it seemed like I did it so long ago. Um, but I've said multiple times on the channel before, you know, I'm a big, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about my supernatural anime. Uh, you know, that like that's big, that's my big thing. And so when Jonathan hit me up about this one, you know, I, I was barely vaguely familiar with it. But I thought like I always thought of this series because it takes place in the Edo period. Right. Like I always thought of it. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we have samurai, you know, we have like yokai because we have like demons and stuff like that. I was surprised to find out how much of this series has more of a horror flavor to it. Like it like it feels like an animated horror movie is essentially the way it feels. But it's not it's not so much horror in the aspect of like anything grotesque or anything like that. No, it's it's horror in the sense of a ghost story. And and that's really what every oh, Jonathan is in the building. What's what's happening, man? Here you go. I got your review. Bro. I know I'm late, but I got it for you. I got it for you, big dog. But uh, but yeah, but the the series feel it feels like ghost stories, like like Edo period ghost stories, and that that was pretty cool. And I didn't really I didn't realize how much of the series played out that way until episode two, because episode one almost like like horror movies because we've adopted this tradition right in terms of horror narratives episode one is the setup but the but the supernatural stuff doesn't really occur until the the cliffhanger for episode one going into episode two and then that's when we you know the you know that if you consider episode one like a haunted house story it's like yeah everyone shows up in episode one, you don't know who's who, but you know something weird's going on, right? And then the you know the 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 pin drops at the end of episode one, and then episode two is like, okay, yeah, we are full blown dealing with something paranormal, and uh, and then that's when the episode two is when the crazy stuff happens, and that's when it's like, oh my god, like what is this? And then, of course, like like good, you know, haunted house stories, you know, it's like, yeah, there's there's a backstory we don't know about. And the backstory is told us totally influencing and inspiring the supernatural motives. And then once we get that backstory, it's like, oh, my God. And this the first episode, dude, when we find out what the case actually is. Whoa. OK, so so OK, enough of that. Let me go ahead and break this down for you all. So. In the first episode, we get introduced to the medicine seller. He's 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 checking into this town and he's checking into an inn. Not long after he arrives at the inn, you know, and it's you know the inn's busy, it's crowded, it's a rainy night and whatnot. Um, a young woman, a young woman who is uh, apparently homeless, uh, is pregnant and apparently is on the run, shows up at the inn and she pretty much begs for a spot there, right? And of you know the innkeeper is reluctant to let her in, but given the circumstances and the weather and all this type of thing, she says, "You know what? I got one room. I got one room, and I will make it available to you. It's all the way at the top floor. Follow me." Okay. Off top, we already know this is a setup, right? Because knowing what we know about the series going into the series, we know the medicine seller isn't there by accident. But the, and the other thing too is, it's like, oh, there's one room they're reluctant to check out. Okay, that room's haunted. We know that room's haunted. We just don't know by what. What we didn't, what we don't expect, and I'm not going to give too much away, but the, I'm going to go back, get the name, the Zashiki 
Warashi. That is a tricky, tricky bean. And it's true, the place is in fact haunted, but the girl brings some stuff along with her. She has some baggage with her that she brings into the joint, which once she's in that environment, that just that 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 just sets it off, right? Uh, and I'm I'm not gonna spoil everything because, like I say, it's a really cool freaking ghost story. You guys got to experience it for yourself. But uh, but it's a satisfying story. And one thing I want to talk about. One thing I really want to mention, and I will give this series credit, and I'll be looking. I'm really interested to see if this continues throughout the rest of the series. One of the things this series sort of does with its narrative, at least in this first story, is it illustrates this notion that while the while the Mononoke, which for any of you all who are familiar with like Mononoke in uh, in Japanese mythology, like Mononoke, they're spirits usually. Right. But they're not all malevolent. You know, some of them are just um, um, they, they are just like forces of nature almost. So one of the best examples I can give you all, if you've ever seen the film Princess Mononoke, right, um, which which is uh, Japanese for princess of the spirits. Right. A lot of the spirit beings in that film, they're not man malevolent spirits, not inherently. They are just forces of nature or their spirits that represents bodies of nature that could become malevolent but that's not their that's not their default nature usually it's something usually it's humans that turn those spirits into you know to to um to force them into that sort of behavior right and so What's cool about this series is even in that first episode, you sort of get the sense that that's what we're dealing with with the Mononoke in this one, because when we find out the role that the innkeeper plays in this whole story, that's when it sort of becomes clearer. And I like how there's this theme and funny enough, because this was in Demon Slayer, too, but there's this theme that perhaps it is not the Mononoke themselves that are the greatest threat. More often than not, humans are the greatest threat. And so it brings into question who's the real monster in this story. Is it the demon or is it the human? And that's here. That's in this series. And yeah, when, when you get the twist, it's like, bruh, bruh. But it's really the way they do it. It's really, really well done. So I'm really curious to see if uh, if that if that sort of like theme continues throughout the series, particularly because, you know, because, you know, I read ahead. I probably shouldn't have spoiled myself. I kind of read ahead. But I know that I think it's the penultimate episode or it might be the last episode of the series is a. Uh, is a fan. Oh, it is the last one. It is the last one. The the Bacanico one, which a Bacanico, um, that's a cat, cat yokai. Um, and apparently that's a three part episode. So yeah, that's the big finale. But I know that's one of like the most popular um episodes from this series. And it's also the story. So, real quick, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. This series is actually a spin-off. It's a spin-off from uh, let's see, it is a spin-off from the 2006 uh, horror anthology series called, let's see, what is it? It's the Ayakashi Samurai Horror Tales. And the story in that series is the Bakaniko story. And that's the story that spun this series off. So it sort of seemed appropriate that it would also be the finale for this series because that's the most famous story from it. Um, I kind of I, I know about that one a little bit because that's the one that, you know, fans uh, bring up all the time. I was talking with my big sister. Shout out to her. If she's watching when uh, I asked. I was like, have you seen this show? And she was like, oh, yeah, no, because I remember that episode. And that's the one she brought up. She brought up that one. So I know about that one. But uh, but yeah. So what do I think about it so far? It, dude, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's, it's, it's like I said, the writing's really good. It's really solid. I like the ghost story vibe. I like the mystery. I like trying to, you know, solve it, figure things out. I really like it. I think it's really good. Um, now, now, 
next let's go straight into the animation because it's one of the things about the series that is uh unique to it it's one of the things that most people remember about the series because it was one of the first things my sister brought up about it um and i'm pretty sure if you guys have seen the thumbnail or if you've seen any clips from it like so real quick let me pull this up because i have my little thumbnail here i want to bring this up so the interesting thing about this series, and let me move the banner real quick so you guys can see it. Um, the animation style is one of the big selling points about it. Um, now, the series <laughs> is described as being an avant-garde anime, which me personally, I don't like that term. Uh, being a, a an art, you know, art major and studying art history and all the things that uh, avant-garde represents and stuff like that, I just always sort of found that to be a pretentious term. Um, but it's avant-garde because the artwork is very much that uh, is done in the same style as those old, you know, the, the classic traditional uh, Japanese scrolls, right? And it's, and the entire series is done like that. Like that's not just for the promotional art, like the end, the whole series is like that, frame for frame for frame. It's all done like that. So much so to the point that the interesting thing about this animation, the animation is done almost, almost like a flip book, if you can believe it. Um, the closest thing I can describe the animation to you guys who haven't seen it yet, it's almost like a motion comic because most of the time we are seeing steel frames. We're seeing still frames. And if there's any action actually occurring on the screen, it's very minimal. Usually the action is always done either by we change a camera angle, which we do that a lot. We do that a lot where we're looking at the same image and we just change the angle. There's actually one sequence in the first episode. We literally go here, here, back, here. And, it, and, it's, and it's, the, it's, the, it's the same image, but we're just seeing it from those four different angles. Um, yeah, and then even then, what we'll do is we'll change camera angle, but whenever we change camera angle, now we're looking at a different freeze frame. So we might have like the medicine seller, you know, um, like, like, like he might be reaching into like a pocket or something, right? And then we'll switch the camera angle and we've already switched the whole image to where now we've seen what he's pulling out, but it's not, it's not done all at once. You see, so it's like one, and then we'll get a, a an insert, a close up of whatever it is he's retrieving, right? So, like I say, it's done like a motion comic where what we're seeing is it's like panel, then the then the next frame is the next panel, then the next frame is the next panel, almost as if you're watching the manga itself as opposed to you know a fluid animation. Now, some of that is there, but what's interesting about it is how little it's done and what they decide to use that traditional animation for is so dynamic that when you see it, you're like, oh, snap. Like, like there's a scene, one of the big scenes is when he, uh, he, he pulls his sutras and there's like tons, and it's kind of funny because once again, we're dealing with paper, right? but like all of these sutras and they start to surround him and then they like explode and like stick to all the walls of the room. Like that is fully animated. We get to see that whole sequence, right? But, uh, but, it's, but it's one of the few times. So I found that to be interesting. It's not a negative though. It's not a negative. Cause like I say, what's cool about it is given the material, what's cool about it is that given that material, it really does sort of bring bring home that sense that we are reading a ghost story, right? And, and, and almost like we're holding the scroll ourselves and we're reading it as it's going, as it's going, as it's, and then bam, right? And it's like, whoa. So it's, it, it makes for a really cool viewing experience. Um, yeah, and it's one that I don't want, I, I don't want to, linger on it too much because then i'll give too much away and you guys ain't gonna want to check it out for yourself so i highly recommend you guys check it out for yourselves um oh snap we got a 20 dollars super sticker from miss anderson thank you so much appreciate that appreciate that thank you very very much appreciate the love um in that in the same vein 
since since I just got done talking about the animation and how you know they incorporated you know incorporated and so much uh, with this whole ghost story that we're watching, the sound mixing in this thing is really freaking be, because as you expect, you're watching a ghost story, right? So there's gonna be some uh, some really eerie sounds, right? Some almost jump scare type sound effects. That's in there. It's in there. Yeah. There, there are some of those, and they're really cool. And uh, I, I might have jumped once. I might have jumped once. Um, be and, and like I said, because of the, because when what happens at the end of the first episode happens, you don't expect that happening. So yeah, I jumped. Fine. Throw stones, kill a messenger. I don't care. I wasn't. I didn't see it coming, and I was like, oh my god. So yeah, there are some of those there. Um, I will say this, though, because now I'm going to go over to the music. Music wise, the score throughout the course of the episodes, pretty good. You know, once again, we're doing traditional old school, like Edo period type music. Right. We got we got a lot of strings. We got some flutes, you know, uh, all of that's there. Oddly enough, though, the opening and ending themes we're doing it. We, we, we went for the whole like you know, 80s sort of like soul type. And I was, you know, like, 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 uh, I don't want to say a full blown love ballad, but you know, we got like that soft, you know, sort of like serenade going on in the opening and intro. And I'm like, huh, that's an, that's an interesting choice for opening and closing themes. I, I thought they would have just stuck with the, you know, uh, traditional, you know, instrument type music, but no, that's not what we did. We did, we did that, uh, like that, that, 80s pop sort of thing not not smile bomb pop but you know like like soul and yeah very very interesting choice i thought very very interesting choice yeah so anywho uh so let's see i covered covered the writing covered animation uh, okay uh, i'll just mention this briefly um just because like i said i did the japanese dub so I don't know who's who's all in the voice cast for this, but the voice acting is good, um, but it's so minimal. And that's the thing. Uh, very minimal. Actually, one of uh, the, the, the young lady character that I mentioned who uh, shows up at the end in this episode, I think she actually has more dialogue than the rest of the main characters in the first two episodes. Medicine Seller speaks very little, but that works to his mystique because he's supposed to be this mysterious figure who, you know, arrives in town and whatnot. We're not we're not supposed to know what he's about until uh, the second episode. So he speaks very little. His vo his voice does sound pretty cool, though. Um, I'll give him that. But I mean, other than that, yeah, most the voice acting is good. You know, it stands up. So anyway, so yeah, not to make this too long, but uh, so overall thoughts on it, really good, really good, really solid. Um, I see why it garnered the the fandom that it has. Um, I see, uh, I see why people like it, and I and uh, I'm actually shocked that I missed this first go around because, like I said, this is 2007. You know, this thing's 13 years old now. So, but I, I, I see why it was. I missed it. Um, in case you guys are interested in checking it out, it is streaming right now on Crackle. So uh, if you guys have never signed up for that, I, actually, I think Crackle is mostly a free service. But you guys can, of course, you can always do like a free trial. And it is it is on Crackle for free. So um, you guys can go ahead and check it out there. All right. So. Um, so, yeah, so that pretty much wraps up my first impressions. I want to thank everyone for tuning in live. Um, thank everyone for watching after the fact. As always, be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. Share this video with anyone. You might get a kick out of it with your family, friends, partners. If you're trying to convince someone to check out the series, maybe you've recommended it to them in the past and they haven't been on it yet. Shoot them this video. Um, I don't know if they'll take my word for it, but at least I hopefully I have broken down enough to intrigue anyone who has yet to see it to go ahead and check it out. Um, be sure to follow me on social media, facebook.com slash OAW entertainment, twitter.com slash OAW -E twitch.tv slash OAW entertainment right here on youtube.com slash OAW entertainment. And last, but certainly not least, let me go ahead and pull up the banner. If 
Last but certainly not least, if you guys have any requests that you want for an uh, anime first impressions or a full blown anime review, please become a patron at patreon.com slash OAW. I have two tiers that I actually honor those requests for. Um, for those of you all who just want a first, impre uh, first impression style, I have the Crunchyroller tier, which will get you um, my thoughts on the first two episodes of an anime or the first three to four chapters of a manga, if you prefer a manga. That's available at the Crunchyroller tier. Um, and then if you would like to, uh, for a longer type of review, for a longer series, you can always select the Blockbuster tier. Um, and just shoot me an email You can, or shoot me a message. You can go ahead and shoot me a message on Patreon. Let me know, hey, liar man, I want to go ahead, like let's say you got a, a 12 series review or a 13 series review. Um, we'll work something out. We'll work something out and uh, we'll be able to you know, get it. Uh, I actually have one of the reviews I will be doing in the next two to three weeks before the month is out. Um, that patron actually did. What they did was they pledged to the Blockbuster tier for three months and accumulated the episode count for me to do the whole series. That's what they did. That's how they did it. They just pledged to Blockbuster for three months. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I normally do four episodes at that tier. Three months, that's 12 episodes. Fuck it. I'll throw in the 13th episode for free. So anyway, once again, if you have a request, that is patreon.com slash OAW. And that's either the Crunchyroller or the Blockbuster tier. Also, in a for either one of those tiers, in addition to your request, you also get access to any Patreon exclusive content. You get access to the OAW vote, which in which is the first two seasons of Otaku Assemble Weekly, the original anime and manga. Well, I'm sorry, anime, manga, movie, and rant series uh, that kicked off the channel. You get access to that, and you also get uh, an invite to join in on the live monthly Q and A, which is held right here on the OAW YouTube channel, the OAW Facebook page, as well as the OAW Twitch channel. That is all included with your pledge. So once again, that is patreon.com slash OAW. All right, guys. So what is coming down the pipe later this week? Later this week, uh, Top 5 is coming back. So I, I, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys know what the next one is. It will be, since we were talking about voice actors earlier, I will be giving you all my Top 5 favorite English anime voice actors that list yep um right now that is scheduled for friday night so stay tuned for that all right guys it's time for me to get out of here want to thank everyone once again for watching live and thanks everyone for watching after the fact with that being said this has been larry williams oaw commander in chief i am signing off and until next time peace are you not entertained are you not entertained is this not why you are here